Santa Barbara and City College are one and together. Yeah. There cannot be a Santa Barbara without City College, and there can be a City College without Santa Barbara. I think it's one of the outstanding community colleges, not just in California, but in the whole country. On the beautiful coast of California, the city of Santa Barbara stands as a paradise on the Pacific. For 100 years, Santa Barbara City College has provided this community with accessible higher education. It is considered the jewel of the California community colleges, but to truly understand Santa Barbara City College, one must first look back and see its rich, dynamic history. At the dawn of the 20th century, California was a state on the move. The invention of the automobile was allowing Americans to migrate west, and many were setting their sights on the southern Pacific coast. Between Los Angeles and San Francisco, a small community known as Santa Barbara was beginning to grow into a full-fledged city. Many attempts had been made to create a higher education program in Santa Barbara, but none had lasted long. With the election of Governor Hiram Johnson, California got its first education-minded leader. Johnson's funding allowed the Santa Barbara Junior College to begin offering classes for students interested in continuing their education. The first classes were offered at Santa Barbara High School. The Santa Barbara School District in 1909 uh, established the beginnings of what became Santa Barbara City College with a post-secondary 13th and 14th grade that marks the very beginning of the college. After 12 years of instruction, the junior college was moved to the Santa Barbara Riviera and in 1926 was absorbed into the Santa Barbara State Teachers College. For the next five years, the college continued to grow, resulting in a need for more space. In 1931, college president Clarence Phelps led the movement to move the campus to a large site in the Santa Barbara Mesa area. The land was successfully acquired, but the Great Depression caused the project to be put on hold. From the years 1926 to 1946, there was no official junior college in Santa Barbara, but the increased number of soldiers coming home from World War II and seeking higher education led to the reorganization of the Santa Barbara Junior College. In 1946, particularly with the government's sponsorship of what was referred to as the GI Bill, all veterans were given an opportunity to come back. Uh, they were supported in getting their baccalaureate degrees. So that's when the college restarted and the, the community college was a very vital resource for that beginning period. In 1946, SBJC resumed operations under the jurisdiction of the Santa Barbara High School District. Since the old Riviera campus was damaged in the 1925 Santa Barbara earthquake and the University of California Santa Barbara was now using the Mesa property, SBJC operated at the new property called the Alacama Center on Santa Barbara Street. The property was donated by Mr. and Mrs. Max Schott. In 1951, a young man named Henry Bagish was hired as a professor of philosophy, history, and English. In the subsequent McCarthy era, Bagish became a strong supporter of free speech on the campus, supporting students and their rights. Our students do have a voice, and they had from day one. And actually, as you read stories by Henry Bagish and other longtime faculty, of how faculty and students have been really a, a partnership beyond the classroom. From 1946 to 1954, 
Santa Barbara Junior College operated at the Alacama Center, but like so many times in the past, the need for more space soon became an issue. In 1954, the Riviera campus was reopened, but also failed to support the growing number of students. Santa Barbara Junior College's big break came when UCSB decided to move its campus from the Santa Barbara Mesa to Goleta Point. The Mesa property that had been acquired over 20 years earlier would finally become SBJC's home. In 1959, we actually gained this location. We, we are on the Mesa campus. Before us, UCSB for a period, before they became officially UCSB were located here. And when UCSB moved in Goleta, where they currently uh, are located, we, through the help of some very visionary people in the community, became Santa Barbara State College on this campus, at the Mesa campus. On July 1st, 1959, three major events occurred. The Mesa campus officially opened, Joseph Cosan became the school's first president, and Santa Barbara Junior College was officially renamed Santa Barbara City College. Not long after Santa Barbara City College officially began operations on the Mesa campus, renovations began on the buildings that were already there. There was hardly anything here. Quonset huts and, and trailers and an old administration building. There was, in the time that I was here, they built a new library that was lovely and uh, I think they moved one building into another building. It was the beginning of the growth. An initial school bond issue granted $200,000 to improve the campus, but in 1962, the school was granted over $3 million for construction. This allowed the school to build new classrooms, its original library, a cafeteria, and gymnasium. The buildings in general, that we acquired and we took over this campus were built by a company called Dim Gym. And we thought they were pretty stark. If you'll notice on the buildings on the east campus, there's no windows in the buildings, especially those that face the ocean. So since then, we've tried to uh, get buildings that have a little style to them, if you will. At this point, SBCC was still operating under the Santa Barbara High School District but in 1965 it was given its own jurisdiction. In 1965 we have actually gained the status of a community college district independent with our own board of trustees, so the first board was created in 1965. On July 1st, 1965, SBCC was officially handed over to the Santa Barbara Junior College District. Along with the college came the adult education program. Adult education is a huge thing in Santa Barbara. Um, you know, there, uh, it serves now over 50,000 unduplicated headcount every year in some capacity, from Carpinteria to Goleta and from the mountains to the ocean. Led by Sam Wake, this program allowed people past the normal college age to continue their education. Sam, of course, was father, so to speak, of the adult education program. Uh, he was uh, very dedicated to it. Uh, he was a bulldog. He got on to something he never let go until he achieved what he needed. One Santa Barbara resident who took advantage of the adult education program was Leatrice Loria, the wife of noted Santa Barbara developer Eli Loria. I enrolled first as a student in uh, ceramics at adult education, and I was uh, interested in what was going on at the main college, which was up here, of course, at the campus. And my daughter challenged me at that time, as I recall. She was studying French, and I said, well, anybody can get a better grade than that. And she said, well, I'd like to see you do better. I said, well, you got it the challenge. So I came up to City College, signed up for one class in French, and I truly loved it so much that I became a full-time student. By the late 1960s, a familiar problem was arising. 
Santa Barbara City College was seeing increasing enrollment and was running out of space. In what is considered one of the school's defining moments, a $3.8 million bond issue was presented to the voters of Santa Barbara to buy what would become the West Campus. We were in a real no-growth period for the city of Santa Barbara. Uh, Santa Barbara City College was still loved like it is now, and I think uh, the effort behind all the citizens of Santa Barbara made the difference. Leading the charge for the bond issue were Sam Wake, Eli Loria, and Gertrude Calton. My husband Eli was, um, he was so excited when I was going to school here that I was loving it so much and he was always a man for, some, for education and he became interested enough to want to help with the bond drive and to want to make the college grow and as a result he was successful with that and then he uh, became a trustee. I was uh, in, very involved in the campaign for them to buy their West Campus when they uh, sold the bond issue. I remember a supervisor, Bill Wallace, and I uh, uh, made a, uh, a commercial for that, and uh, it was kind of funny because Bill was sort of known as a no-growth no supervisor, and I was a builder, and I, what we said on the commercial was, uh, well, Bill and I don't agree on a lot of things, but one thing we do agree on is that the, the voters of Santa Barbara should uh, pass this bond issue so that City College could acquire this wonderful property. The bond measure passed with over 70% of Santa Barbara supporting it. Santa Barbara City College was about to expand again. The first building constructed on the West Campus was the Garvin Theater, named in memory of board member James Garvin. Shortly thereafter, a footbridge was built to connect the East and West campuses, but SBCC's expansion wasn't about to slow down. In August of 1981, Dr. Peter McDougall became president of Santa Barbara City College. Dr. McDougall uh, was the only one that was selected that was not a president of a college or a chancellor of a college. He was a dean, but he uh, had such great credentials. He, you could just tell the way he spoke and uh, his visions. During his time in office, he presided over the largest expansion in Santa Barbara City College's history. I think the uh, the school changed fairly dramatically uh, from a visual standpoint during the 21 plus years that I served as president. The, uh, the, the most dynamic uh, change, uh, albeit not the only change, occurred on the West Campus. And there were two major aspects to the change on this campus. One was the development of additional buildings. The first building to go up during the time I was president was the Library Learning Resource Center. Uh, wonderful facility, I think, continues to be very highly functional today and of great value uh, to students and faculty. The next uh, building constructed was the Interdisciplinary Center, where you have your social sciences and uh, other fields. And then the final building uh, to be built was this building, the Business uh, Communication Center. So the development of those three major structures with uh, tremendously uh, vital uh, faculty resources in each one of them really brought the campus alive and balanced East End and West. While serving as president, Dr. McDougall sparked a close friendship with board member Eli Loria that would last the next 27 years. On September 5, 1989, SBCC's new library was officially named the Loria Library. Oh, that was a wonderful day. That was, first of all, it was a gorgeous day. And I remember sitting, of course, it was tented in and a tented, uh, but open on the sides. And it was <clears throat> a majestic experience to be sitting in front of a new library that the city, the city college needed so badly. And to see this gorgeous building, um, look to the left and see the building, look to the right and see the ocean and the islands, it was spectacular. 
And it was a very exciting day and certainly a very fulfilling day for Eli and for me, something that we had both wanted to do for this college for many years. Through the partnership between Dr. McDougall and Mr. Loria, SBCC entered a new era of visual prosperity. Well, uh, Pete and Eli were very far-sighted men. They had visions. They were both visionaries. And Eli would walk around the campus with Pete and he'd say something like this, well, you know, here's a spot over here. It would look great to have a sculpture there. Pete would say, oh, I couldn't agree with you more. That would be just wonderful. And then that next thing you knew, it would happen. Well, I mean, that's what we used to do. We used to walk around campus and we used to, I think, number one, never take for granted uh, the beauty of this campus. And then to think, well, gee, it's so beautiful. How can we, how can we make it better without taking away from the beauty? I want them to come in here and say, well, gee, I love that. I love seeing this sculpture piece or this art. Something that the community will enjoy, something that we, we enjoy. To this day, one of Santa Barbara City College's most beautiful locations is the West Campus Fountain, donated by Eli Luria and Michael Tobes. Adding to the beauty of the campus are a series of overlooks on the cliffs of City College, each one named for a benefactor in the school's history. So, over, over the years, there have been some big philanthropic gestures and uh, somebody taking a walk along the west campus uh, near the bluff will see overlooks or name for contributors. Within Santa Barbara City College, programs of study have expanded to fit a wide variety. Over the years, SBCC has established a broad range of departments including culinary arts, marine diving, theater, athletics, and nursing, of which SBCC is partnered with Santa Barbara Cottage Hospital. The last graduates of the Knapp School of Nursing I believe graduated in 1968 and that program then transitioned over to Santa Barbara City College. The nursing program at Santa Barbara City College now provides local medical establishments with a steady stream of new graduates eager to assist in the healthcare field. For students looking to explore the world, Santa Barbara City College has offered a study abroad program spanning six of the seven continents. Uh, another area that I uh, give complete credit to our faculty, but I was always tremendously supportive of, and I think helped Santa Barbara City College stand out, was the study abroad programs. We're the first community college to go to China. Uh, that occurred in 1987, before China was really open that much to foreign travel. Uh, that was followed in 1989 with a trip to what had been uh, the Soviet Union. During the late 1990s, Santa Barbara City College once again saw expansion. The last major building project under President Peter McDougall was the construction of the campus bookstore. To celebrate the President's two decades of service, the main office at SBCC was renamed the McDougall Administration Center. Over the years, Santa Barbara City College has continued to grow in size and attendance. In 2001, long-serving professor Henry Bagish retired, having taught at SBCC for 50 years. A new era was beginning at Santa Barbara City College. In 2002, John Romo succeeded Peter McDougall as president of Santa Barbara City College. During his years as president, the campus saw increased enrollment and student capacity. One of the things that programmatically, uh, I think, uh, makes Santa Barbara City College special is that we really consciously worked on trying to provide opportunities for students to have experiences outside of the classroom. Uh, you know, educational experiences, socializing experiences, 
very much like you would have on a, on a, re, on a residential campus at a four-year school. Throughout SBCC's history, it has seen many important figures visit, including Ted Kennedy, Desmond Tutu, Ansel Adams, and more recently, Bill and Hillary Clinton during their 1996 re-election campaign. But in 2008, Santa Barbara City College played host to one of the city's largest political rallies ever. How's it going, Santa Barbara? I had to tell the president that City colleges in Chicago don't look like this. Another funny part of that whole experience was that uh, later at Oprah's, I think it was, uh, he got up and spoke and he said that uh, he was kind of giving some consideration to maybe not continuing to run for president of the United States, but he thought he might run for president of Santa Barbara City College because it was a pretty, pretty spectacular place to be. On July 29, 2008, Santa Barbara City College became the third city college in California's history to hire a female president, Dr. Andrea Serban. I was extraordinarily lucky and uh, blessed to be able to obtain the position, and uh, this is the greatest college and the greatest job that one can have. On August 20th, 2009, Santa Barbara City College kicked off its 100th anniversary celebration with an event commemorating its history and the school's partnership in the community. It's, it's just an extraordinary evolution. And the 100 years is, is truly amazing if you think of the history of, of this community. And I feel very proud of what this college has accomplished in these 100 years of being, you know, a heart in this community, a college with a heart. college continues to grow and the sculpture continues to be placed in beautiful places and there's a wonderful collection of art here and it ranks in my estimation tops certainly in any city college anywhere in this country. I've been to quite a few. Eli and I traveled and wherever we traveled we always visited a city college and there was never anything anywhere that compared to this beautiful school. Santa Barbara City College is, is, is like a nucleus of, of, uh, of, of community service and uh, the community has benefited tremendously from its uh, presence. I can't imagine, you know, a better place and somebody said you haven't lived until you lived in Santa Barbara well you haven't lived until you lived in Santa Barbara and you haven't lived until you experienced Santa Barbara City College.